Hello everyone, it's Jackie, back for another GameStop update. And boy, do we have a good one for you. So let's just jump right into it. So, GameStop on the daily time frame. Alright, this is where we're going to start. The first thing I want to discuss is the daily candles. Right now, we can see that there's a steep decline in volume. And now we're seeing price consolidate. And what's very interesting, right, is the size and the structure of these candles. So first we had a dragonfly doji that printed right here, and that was kind of strange. And then we had this bullish engulfing candle, and that was really great, right? Because that looked like it might be some bullish continuation. And once we had that bullish engulfing, things started to look really good, right? Really positive. There's still a schwack of volume that's coming in, but we're finding support. And now today, we've printed an inside Dragonfly Doji. So this candle is completely inside of yesterday's prior candle. And there's a lot of indecision taking place on GME's chart here. All right. So what we can do is just simply look to the left and look at a time where price action had done something very similar. Where you had this big, big move candle. Inside day, inside day, inside day. Doji, doji, doji. And then you broke out with this one. And then there was a question mark candle, right? A little bit of a gravestone doji styled candle. And then bang, big, big, big move to the upside. Now, once again, we find ourselves in this moment with a dragonfly doji, a bullish engulfing, followed by another dragonfly doji with an inside bar. This is really suggestive that there is a lot of hesitation, a lot of indecision taking place on GameStop's chart. And so with regards to this, right, we've been looking at the volume, which we see is steeply declining. And then we've been looking at our support resistances, right? We pull a Fibonacci from this low to this high, and we see that we're inside and holding the golden pocket of this retracement. That's really, really, really bullish, right? Not only that, but we're holding at the top side of a gap fill, right? That's what this little box is here at the bottom. This is a little gap fill, okay? And so when we see this, we think to ourselves, dang, that looks like pretty good support. And then we look over to the left and we say, dang, price is actually basing above a prior resistance level. So this zone right here, this was nothing but support. Or excuse me, resistance. My dog is just going fucking nuts in the background, sorry. So because this was resistance, right? Once we broke through this here and came back down, we have now found this as an area of support so far. Rather than resistance, that is very, very, very bullish, right? And then let's look at those moving averages, right? We have been waiting to see if we would get a golden cross on this, right? And so far, it's looking really positive. Both of those moving averages are still sloping up, even if the 200 is just barely, and the 50 is looking beautiful. We could have a golden cross. Now, here's the big thing, right? If GME fails to hold this golden pocket and this gap fill, right? It is almost a guarantee that price will come back and backtest this golden cross. It's almost a certainty that that will happen. However, right? However, if GameStop does manage to hold this prior resistance as new support, right? This could make a big explosive move towards the gap fills. We have a gap fill here, a gap fill here, and a gap fill here, right? So 2770. 39.90 and 49.69. Nice. That is a big move just from where GME is right now. Right? And we are seeing the fear from the hedge funds and the short sellers and whoever is trapped on GME. And you want to know how I can smell their fear? <laughs> this thing right here. Spy today. Now, you guys have listened to my videos a few times before. 
And you have heard me discuss the steep decline that has been taking place on Spy's volume. Do you want to know something neat? Today was the lowest volume Spy day in seven years. It has been seven years since Spy had a full daily candle that had that low of volume. Not the Thanksgivings, not the Christmas. No, excuse me, Spy had its lowest volume day in seven years. Now, one of the things that Jackie has discussed here for a while is the idea that there might be somebody who makes the markets on Spy that might just be in a little bit of trouble on this thing right here. And again, part of the reason that I say this is simply because of the volume that is showing up on GME. Look at some of these volume bars. 187 million, 207, 131, 76, and even today, 49 million in volume. On a small cap, quote unquote, shit co as these fucking analysts would like to call it. People should be getting really fucking excited. Because to me, I think there's trouble brewing. And for once, it might not be retail on the losing end. And there's just one more thing that gets Jackie really fired up. We head over to the options. We head over to the options and we see a couple of two plus million dollar trades. And we say, hey, 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 hey. What's that about? And we open them up, right? We open them up. And we ask ourselves, are those the same 20 calls that we looked at yesterday that somebody placed $5 million on? And to you, good sir, I would say, yes, it is. And then you'll ask, Wait, did, did somebody buy more of the exact same strike? And to you, good sir or madam, I would say they did. To the tune of $8.1 million. $8.1 million. Giving you a combined total of $13 million placed on a 20 call for the June monthly expiration. Now... Why does this have me excited? Because there's no hedge. This trader did not take any sort of hedge. They did not sell any other calls. They did not take any other puts. This is a directional trade to the tune of $13 million. Somebody or somebody's is beginning to place a large amount of money on GameStop. And not just a large amount of money. No, no. No, 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 no. No, good sir. No. But there are lots of seemingly short people that are covering some of their positions. For those of you that were live on stream today, we watch this. We watched the bull and bear premium and the bulls were down by 10 million in premium. And I said in the final 15 minutes of the day, I said, watch, this will flip because I know what they're doing. And it is the same thing that I have described to you guys before where they are flipping short dated garbage. They're selling short dated calls. They're trying to slam the price down during the day to get everybody to freak out. And when they sell the calls, everybody freaks out, but they don't. And they sell calls, right? They sell their positions worthless, right? It lost money. Oh no. And then what happens? They cover their garbage positions. Same nonsense today. Open it up, sell those positions, right? 
get people to FOMO out of their positions. Oh my God, it went down. I'm down so much. And then what happens? Rip it right back to where it came from. How many days are these guys going to do this? You guys will ask, well, can't they just do this relentlessly? Can't they just do this forever? Let me tell you guys some. Someone or some bodies shorted GME here. And now price is here. Someone or some bodies is in deep shit. And you best believe that they do not have the cash to continue this dog and pony show. They can't, it can't go on. Somebody's going to have to cover their short. They're just going to have to. And part of the reason I think this is because this move came unexpectedly. They did not anticipate a 550% move from the bottom. Because they did not expect that, they went into panic overdrive, pulled all of the traders off of SPY, moved everybody off of this, and now it's all hands on deck for GME. And they can't get price any lower because nobody's interested in selling. And if nobody's interested in selling, then price eventually has to go higher. And if price eventually has to go higher, somebody's going to have to cover some shorts. And if somebody has to cover some shorts, it's going to start making fucking price actually go up the way it should. And then when price starts going up the way it should, retail's going to fuck them up. But in the meantime, we have to play their shit fucking game, which is them selling calls, making people FOMO out of positions, and then buying them back, selling the calls, buying them back, selling the calls, trying to buy them back, selling the calls, trying to buy them back. You cannot continue to do this if people are not selling their positions. And if people are not selling their positions and you can't break support, because bulls are defending it, someone's got to cover. So who's going to blink first, right? Who is going to blink first? And I promise you, the guy who's buying two plus million dollars every minute at the close of the day for GME for the last two straight sessions, you better fucking believe that that guy thinks that the short sellers are going to blink first, motherfucker. And so does Jackie. Because they don't have shit. They don't have liquidity. They don't have the options to drive the price down anymore. They don't even have their own fucking bank accounts under control. They are in trouble. And somebody is going to have to let it go. And when the thing lets go, it's going to make a fucking unholy move. The last thing that I want to touch on with GameStop, okay? Last thing I want to touch on with GameStop tonight is the shelf offering. Listen, every single one of you that are listening to this video right now you don't have to go to twitter you don't have to go to super stonk you don't have to go to google you don't have to go to bloomberg jackie is going to tell you the truth about the shelf offering right here and right now no misinformation no garbage no bullshit i'm going to tell you exactly what the shelf offering is designed for there are too many weasels too many people that don't have a clue what they're reading nor what they're even talking about when it comes to filings. Let me explain something very fucking clearly. GameStop did a shelf offering. A shelf offering implies that they are not, let me repeat that, not diluting the stock immediately. In fact, it gives them the allowance to have three years before they decide to dilute. So now that we have that under control, 
why would Ryan Cohen have not chosen to do the shelf offering here or here or here? Why choose to do it right there? Why? Let me explain why. Because he didn't want retail to think that he was Adam Enron. Because too many motherfuckers are stupid. And don't know how to fucking read a filing. So you get guys like Tenny Baron going on Twitter telling you that it's dilution. And that as the share price is going down, oh, that's GameStop selling shares. Okay, here's a fucking tip. GameStop has to file every time they dilute via that shelf offering. Do I see a filing? Let's see if we can hear one. Nope, not really hearing one either. Interesting. So GameStop hasn't diluted the stock even a single share yet. How do I know that? Because they did the offering right fucking here. They did the shelf offering right on this fucking candle. You think GameStop is dumb enough to dilute the stock at fucking 22? We were just at 60. Why wouldn't they do it there? Because Ryan didn't want you to think that he is Adam Enron. He is not doing the same thing. The reason that GameStop is doing a shelf offering is because imagine a scenario in which GameStop starts to rocket. And through this rocket, GameStop sells 15 mil. Sells another 15 mil. Right? And then sells another 15 mil. So GameStop, through that first sale, this second sale, and this third one, would raise over $2 billion with a B. $2 billion would be raised in cash. Bang! Straight into GameStop's pocket. Now, you don't think that Ryan Cohen wants more money for the dilution that he is going to put forth? Why the fuck would he do it here? Who's the fucking idiot that said they were diluting here? Punch them in the face and unfollow them. Because it's garbage. Ryan Cohen did a shelf offering because he anticipates the share price going higher. And as the share price goes higher, he can dilute the stock in small little chunks that will barely have an impact on the share price. Want to know how I know this? Because he did it in fucking December. Yes, imagine that. He did it in fucking December. Imagine a shelf offering. And then what happened? The share price stabilized and said bye-bye. And then guess what Ryan did, guys? Diluted the stock right there. At the very top. So if he did it once before at the top, why the fuck didn't he fucking do it at the top of this one? The biggest move in three years. Let me tell you why. Because he fucking expects GameStop share price is going to fucking squeeze. And when it squeezes... He's going to dilute chunk by chunk to raise capital for GME so that GameStop can survive and end the bear thesis. The shorts walked in to the greatest trap of all time. And you guys get to be a part of it. So strap in, sit down, shut the fuck up, and watch this thing do some fucking damage. Because we're going to fuck some hedge funds up, baby!